good. God is good. Well, my husband is passing out some papers that we're going to be teaching a, a, a little bit on how to evangelize, how to evangelize, how to go out in the community and see lives uh, change and hearts set on fire for Jesus. You want to see some people set free today? Yeah. Amen. God is on the move. After that prayer now, I am so fired up. I'm ready to get out into the community. I'm ready to see some lives touch and change for some chains to fall off in Jesus' name. Have you seen people, when they, when they don't have Jesus, it's like they're... And then once you, you minister to them and they receive the Lord and Savior in their life, it's like the joy of the Lord just wash over them. And you can literally see that, right? Well, we're going to see... We have the chain breaker going out today with us, and we're going to see some chains broken and lives set free. In Jesus' name, everybody got our, their paper out? All right, so we want to take some notes. We want to take some notes. And, and you know what? God is going to use every one of us because he used simple, ordinary people to do extraordinary things. Do we have some simple, ordinary people here? Awesome, awesome. All right. Um, so why do we go? We're talking about going, going, going. Well, why do we go? Why do we go? And it's because Jesus has commanded us to go. He has commanded us to go. And that's the Great Commission. The Great Commission, have your Bibles with you. Let's turn to the book of Matthew chapter 28. Matthew 28, verse 18 through 20, and we're going to read there. We're going to read there, and we're going to get that in our spirits. Are you there? Okay, good. So we're going to read now. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. See, going, it's not something that we think about, talk about. We are commanded to go by the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, right? If we are followers of Jesus, then we are commanded to go. It doesn't matter what position we hold. Going is not just for the pastors, the elders, the deacons. It's not for a select few. It's for each and every one of us. And no matter how small we may think, we may think we are a zero. But if we have Jesus and he's number one, what does that make it? It makes it a 10. And if you add another zero, what does it make it? A 100, you know? So if we're going, he said he is with us. So we're not going to go by ourselves. If we're going, we're going with Jesus. He is leading our way. We are following him. And as we go out, we're going to be used by him. Right? Amen? Another reason why we go is because we love people. How many of you love people? We love people. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 9 and verse 36. Matthew 9 and verse 36. We love people. You love people? Amen. Jesus loved people. And because we are his disciple, we are filled with that love as well, right? So we're going because we love people. Matthew 9, 36, and it says, But when he saw the multitude... He was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Imagine a sheep without a shepherd. What happens? They're lost. They're lost. And they're heading in a direction where, where, where they just don't know where to go. So people are lost and they're without hope. And they're outside there. And God is saying... Will you go? Will you go? Will you love those people? Somebody had to love us, right? Somebody had to love us to bring us into the kingdom of the Lord, right? If people would just look at us and point out every single sin inside of us, how would we feel? 
right? We will feel like, oh, they're so judging me. I'm never going to go there, right? But if, if we see people with the eyes of Jesus, and look beyond the fall to the need, right? If we look beyond the fall to the need, their need of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, a needy people, a people that does, does not know how to live, how to function. When we didn't know Jesus, we were lost as well, right? I remember when I, before Jesus, I was in Hinduism. And I thought religion was the way. I thought being a good person was the way. I thought if I could just be good enough, smart enough, maybe I will be accepted. But no matter how hard I tried, I was just a mess. I was always feeling like I wasn't good enough. Uh, no matter what I did, I was feeling like I was empty. You see, we are created with that emptiness and that void that can only be filled with Jesus. See, religion wouldn't satisfy, and nothing, drugs, alcohol, food, nothing would satisfy. It can only be filled with the love of Jesus. So when we are going out, let's think about these people that they're lost. What do sinners do? They sin. So let's not go out and judge them. You know, when we go out, we're not going to clean the fish before we catch them. Let's go out. And as we go out, we're going to catch the fish, and the Holy Spirit is going to do the cleaning, right? We're going to fill, be filled with the love and compassion of the Lord. So as we go out, we're going to say, Lord, today, even today, right now, Lord, baptize us with your love and your compassion for the community, that we will see people with your eyes, that we will feel your heartbeat, God, as we go out in the community today, that you will touch hearts and lives in Jesus' name. All right? Amen. Evangelism is for everyone. Evangelism is for everyone. Another reason why we go, it's not just for the pastors and leaders. It's not just for the pastors and leaders. And if you would it, turn with me to 2 Timothy and chapter 4 and verse 5. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 5. All right, are you there? Good. It says, but you be watchful in all things. Endure affliction. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. Not everyone is called to be an evangelist, but everyone is called to do the work of an evangelist. And what that simply means is go love on your neighbor and tell them about Jesus. And you know what? You don't have to know it all. You don't have to know this entire Bible before you go. You go, you have a testimony. What about the woman in the well? What did she know? She just came and encountered Jesus. And what did she do? She ran into the community and she said, come, come see a man that told me everything that I've ever done. Come, come learn about this Jesus. So even if you don't know how to share yet, you have a testimony testimony. You know what the Lord and Savior has done in your life. And your testimony is so powerful. People may stay, they may criticize your Bible, they may criticize you being a Christian, they may criticize everything, but they cannot tell you that what the Lord has done in your life is not true. Is that true? Amen. He, they cannot, how do we overcome? by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And your testimony is so very, very powerful. When you share your testimony out there, sometimes you may not be able to share depending on how every situation and every circumstance is different. And we don't have a cookie-cutter gospel. We encourage you to be led by the Spirit as we go out. But sometimes just sharing your testimony is just so powerful. And how we share our testimony what did Jesus, how were you before Christ? 
How were you before Christ? Were you hopeful? Were you lost? Did, what was going on with you? You know, you don't have to go and share all the details in your life. For example, if you were a, a drug dealer, you may not want to share that with somebody who, who thinks they have it all together. They might say, I'm a pretty good person, but you can say, you know what? I didn't have it all together. I was trying to satisfy my life with a bunch of stuff, and, um, and you know, I still didn't have hope, you know. But then you focus on when you encounter Jesus. And how he has changed your life. I didn't have no hope. But then someone told me about Jesus. And I learned about him. I wanted to know why he came for me. Because he had no reason to come. He had no sin. But yet he came for me, a sinner. And he died on the cross. But three days later, he rose again. And because he did, he has given me hope. So your testimony has three parts. Keep it simple. Keep everything simple. Keep it easy. Before Christ, when you encounter Christ, and how he has changed your life. Don't focus too much on your before. Focus more, mainly on what Jesus did on you. People, you, you always want to point people to Jesus. It's not about me. It's about Jesus. It's about Jesus. Amen? All right. So what is the number one reason why people do not go? What is the number one reason why people do not go? The main reason people don't go is because they're fearful. Fearful of what? Fearful of maybe rejection. Maybe fearful that people wouldn't accept them. Maybe fearful that people would shut the door in their face. You know what? God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power of love, and of a sound mind. Right now, say right now, I have the mind of Christ. I am not fearful. I'm going to walk in faith this morning. And you know what? Even if you go out there and experience rejection, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting Jesus. Jesus. And what we're going to do, we're going to go, and if they're not ready, we're going to plant seed. We're going to water seed. And in due time, the harvest is going to be reaped, right? We, when we go out, it's not up to us to save people. It's the Lord and Savior. He's the one that does the work. He is the one that saved, delivers, and set free. And we are only instruments that he's going to use to be able to accomplish what he wants to get done today. What he has called us to do, go. He didn't say save. He says, go, go and make disciples. So as we go, if hearts are open, we're going to preach the gospel and they're going to get saved. They're going to be delivered. They're going to be set free. They're going to get to know the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and have a relationship and we're going to help them get disciples. If they're not open, we may just be able to give them a smile and say, Jesus loves you. And that is just simply planting a seed. If we are able to share the gospel, we may be able to water a seed. If they're not ready, you know what? The next time we go again, maybe they may be ready then. It's not up to us to save. We are called to go. We're called to go. So when you go, if you go and you feel like you've shared and you shared your heart out and nothing happened, don't be discouraged. Go again. You have done what God has called you to do, and he will do the rest. We all love to see the salvation, right? I do. I love to see the, the salvation. But think about this. If you planted a garden, what you had to do? You first had to prepare the soil, right? You had to prepare the soil, and then you'll get the seeds, and you'll germinate the seed, and you will plant those seeds, and then you will water those seeds. And you will water those seeds, and pretty soon they're going to grow up. They're going to grow up. And then what's going to happen? We're going to reap the harvest. Sometimes we don't want to prepare and plant. We want to just reap. And it doesn't always happen like that. The Lord does the work. So be encouraged. No matter what happens when you go, you're going to go be filled with the love of Jesus and share as the Holy Spirit leads you. Amen? Amen. All right. So, so the five simple tips to evangelism, five simple tips to evangelism. 
is one, be led by the Spirit. Be led by the Spirit. So we did, we, we prayed, we are prayed up here this morning, right? So we are already prayed up. So we, as we are prayed up, we're going to be led by the Spirit. As we go out into the community, we are going to be able to share with people, and the Holy Spirit is going to lead us. The Holy Spirit is going to lead us. We're believing that, that the Lord is going to pour out his Spirit in such a supernatural way that he's going to give us words of wisdom, words of knowledge. And as we go out, we're going to see people set free. I have walked into community, um, and being led by the Spirit is so awesome because sometimes even people that are closed are open when the Lord just drop a word for you for them. Isn't that awesome? Uh, we have gone into a community. Um, we were dealing with Jehovah Witness. How many, how many of you have come across that? Jehovah Witness, do you feel like sometimes they're hard to get through to? I'm telling you, through the power of the Holy Spirit, those chains are broken and God sets them free. Uh, we have gone into a community, and, and I remember how many of you know elderly people sometimes are harder to win and younger are easier. But through, um, I'm sharing this story to encourage you because through the power of the Holy Spirit, there is no barrier. And uh, we, no matter how hard they seem, nothing is too hard for the Lord to do. And with him, all things are possible, right? It's possible to see them saved, healed, delivered, and set free. So we had walked into this neighborhood, and there was these Jehovah Witness in their 80s, a couple. And um, a couple of times, our teams, we go door-to-door -door in communities, and we go all the time. We just don't go once, and that's it. We schedule time, so I want to encourage you, schedule time, whether it's once a month or twice a month, or however, second Saturday we do generally for our community, and then we have teams that will go different times of the week, so we will have people paired up in teams of two or three, and we will just go into the community. So as we were going into the community, we were there, the, uh, the team was at their Jehovah Witness door, and they knock at the door, and the, the guy came out, and he goes, we have our own Bibles, and we are Jehovah Witness, and we don't want to hear. And he shut the door, and he was gone. You know what? We just smiled and said, Jesus love you, and we moved on. And you might encounter some things like that in the communities that you're going. Don't take offense. Just keep going. The next time the team went again, and they did the same very thing. They said, we are Jehovah Witness. We have our own Bibles, and, and we don't want to hear. So they shut the door, and they went. The next time we went again, we don't give up easily. God didn't give up on us, so we're not going to give up on our community, right? So we went back again, and we knock on the door again this time. And he came out again, and this time I had another team member with me. And when he came out, he says, we have our own Bibles, and we have our, our own religion, and we're Jehovah Witness and all of that. And right at that very moment, the Holy Spirit dropped a word in me. And the Lord said, something was going on in his back. And I look at him, and I says, sir, is there something going on with your back here today? And he says, yes, how did you know that? Are you psychic? And I go, no. I believe in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he loves you so much. He's a personal God, and he knows everything that's going on inside of you. I'm a child of him, and I worship him. And he told me that something is going on with your back today. Is that true? And he said, yes. He said, a couple of days ago, ago I...
and Savior, it's not, everything is still not okay. I still have troubles. I still have trials. I still encounter situation. But now I am more hopeful because I have him in my life no matter what I go through. No matter what storms comes my way, I have him so I can run to him. So when my world is falling apart, I am not falling apart, right? Because I trust in him. So let them know, be real, be you, be yourself. All right? Find, next point is find common grounds. Find common grounds. So you're going, you're knocking on somebody's door, you tell them who you are, where you're from, and what you are there for, right? And, and as you're talking to them, you're going to find some common ground. Common ground like you walk in, you see they have beautiful flowers in their front yard, and you go, oh, wow, you must got a green thumb. Look at those flowers. They're so blooming. They're so beautiful just as your smile on your face. Just find something nice to tell them, something nice about themselves, something that they, that's going to make them feel good. If they have grandkids, talk about their grandkids. If they have kids, anything that you see that you can make a connection with, Right? You talk about those things and, and you connect with them on a normal, natural level, right? You, talk, um, you connect with them on a normal, natural level. Number four is be slow to speak and quick to listen. Slow to speak and quick to listen. People are hurting and sometimes they want to be listened to. We're not going to go, just go throw all of our agenda on them and just tell them everything about us, us, us. We're going to point them to Jesus. But we want to be also, as we are led by the Spirit, we want to know what's going on in their lives, right? We want to know how we can pray for them. We want to hear them talk a little bit. Not give them full, complete control, but have them talk a little bit. Like you may ask them, well, how is your family doing? You know, um, do you have someone that may be in the hospital? Uh, can I pray for you for your children? Are you having any trouble? A good thing to ask is, how can I pray for you today? And they may tell you, oh, well, so-and-so have cancer. Um, you know, my mom... She was diagnosed with cancer, and, and she has no hope, and our family is falling apart, or my husband just left me, or my kids. So this way, you're going to know how to be able to pray for them. You may not even need to ask them towards the end, what can I pray for you for? Because they've already tell, told you everything that's going on, right? So we're going to allow them to speak a little bit, be a good listener, so you can be able to pray for them, right? And then always pop the question. Always pop the question. So you went, you knock on the door, you find common ground, you're being led by the Spirit, you hear them talk, and now you're going to say, Hey, Brenda, it was great talking to you today. Thank you so much for opening your door. It, it was just awesome to get to know you, you know? Before I leave today, so we talk about the natural stuff. We talk about things that were going on in their family and their lives. You get to know them, and you find out things that were going on. And now you're going to say, you know what? Before I leave today, Brenda, may I ask you a question? And Brenda, because you have developed a relationship and get to know her a little bit, it will be hard to say, no. She might say, you know, yes. What is it that you want to ask me? And then you could say, do you know for sure if you were to die today that you will go to heaven? You can write that down. Do you know for sure if you were to die today that you will go to heaven? And she may say yes or no. Then you, you may say, what if... You, you were to stand before God and he were to say to you, why should I let you into my heaven? What would you say? What would you say? And she may say, you know, I'm a pretty good person. I go to church. I give to the poor. I do all these things. Listen for what she, her response is going to be because based upon the response, you're going to know 
how to be able to talk to her. If she say, because I do this and I do that, it's based upon what she believes she does to get to the Lord, right? So it's based upon her good works then. Does it make sense? If it's because of me, 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 because of I do this and I do that, it, it, it means that she's probably trusting in her salvation because of her good works, right? So you want to hear them say, because I trust in Jesus, I know I will have eternal life. When God say, why should I let you into my heaven? You, the, the only right answer is about Jesus and what Jesus did for me. Does it make sense? Yeah. If it's about me, 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 it, me, it simply means that they probably don't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, and they're trying to fill that void with works on what I do, where I go, how I conduct myself. Based upon those things, that's how I'm going to have eternal life. But if they say, Oh, I know I'm going to go to heaven because I believe that Jesus came and he went to the cross and he died for my sin. I am born again. I am saved. Any one of those, you know, you, you, you can tell. You can tell. So if they say, um, if they say that based upon their good works, then you know it's time to, to preach the gospel to them. And then you could say, well, Brenda... You know, I used to feel the same way. I used to think because I was good enough and because of my works, that's how I was, I was going to go to heaven. But then I realized no matter what I did, I was still a sinner in need of a Savior. But then someone told me about Jesus who had no sin. You see, my problem is my sin. And the sin is what separates me from God. But Jesus had no sin. He came.
too much of their time. For example, if you are there and you see um, a mom, maybe she's cooking, she has something on her stove, and you are trying really hard to win them for Jesus, she, it may not be the right time there, right? It may not be the right time. So what we want to do is be careful with time also as we go out. It may not be uh, the right time, but as you respect their time, maybe they are more open for another time, right? If they are leaving the home for something, then you want to say, great seeing you today. How about I come back maybe next week or something like that? And they might be more open as opposed to just going and trying to make something happen. Does that help? Does it help? Would you guys be okay to do some role play this morning? All right. So we're, we, we could probably do, let's maybe do two role play. Brenda, come on up. Okay, so first of all, we're going to go, well, let's maybe do three. One is completely closed, right? And we're going to see how we respond. We're going to knock on a door. I'm knocking this morning. Brenda is having a really bad day, and she does not want to talk to anybody. So I am going to knock on her door and see what Brenda does this morning. Anybody home? Hi, Brenda. My name is Tara, and we are down um, from that church down the street. You're not open. You don't want to hear. Get away from my face. That's no. what you're doing. Well, usually, they say, usually they say, oh, I heard of that church. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to go to that church. Okay, so, all right. So that's how her response. Yeah. So she did that, and I'm going to say, Brenda, thank you so much anyway for your time. Thank you for opening your door. Maybe another time we'll stop by. You have a great day. Jesus loves you. Move on. <laughs> well, maybe you can talk fast too. So she's not open, so understand what's going on. She's not open. Don't try to make some, something happen. Don't try to oh, speak louder. Thank you so much for your time, and move on. If you move on, maybe next time they'll say, you know what, I was mean to that lady. I slammed the door pretty much in her face. And how did she respond? She responded in love, and she says, have a good day. You know, they'll remember that. They will sure remember that. The next time you go back, I'm sure they're going to be a little bit nicer, if not fully nicer, but a little bit nicer because, you know what? The Lord is going to touch their heart. And guess what? You have accomplished something. You went, and even though the door was slammed in your face, pretty much, you have planted a seed of love, the love of Jesus. That's what you have done. You maybe have prepared the soil there, or you have planted a seed, right? So now I'm going to go back. Um, I'm going to go back, and this time I'm going to go. Brenda is a mom that has five kids, and they're all crying. She really wants to come. She really wants to hear what I'm saying, but, but she doesn't have the time. It's just not a good time. So all the kids are crying, and I'm knocking. It's just a bad time to go knock on her door. Um, so, okay. They're going, wah, wah. <laughs> okay, so she has five kids, and they're all, all, she really does have five kids, you know. Doesn't she look awesome? Yeah, she does, right? So she has five kids, and they're all wanting something. One of them needed breastfeeding the same time. One of them is teething, and I, I don't know. One of them is just hanging on her skirt. Hi, Brenda. I don't know her name. Oh, hi. You know, we're from the um, church down the street, and you know, the Bible says for us to love our neighbor, and we just want to come out and love our neighbor today. We, we, we don't, um, but before we love our neighbor, we need to know who our neighbors are, right? So we're just here to get to know our neighbor. All right, I see. Uh, I see you have your hands full. So you know what, Brenda, since we are all... Right down the street. Is it okay for me to stop by another time? Yeah, if you want to come knock on the door, we'll come and knock on the door and see what they have to say. That's awesome. You know, I'm going to come back tomorrow. So you see, 
Brenda was open to talk, but it was just not a good time for us to talk. So I couldn't try to say, okay, Brenda, let, let's, let, you know, the next time she might just push the door in my face because I wasn't respectful of her. But if I was respectful of her, her time and what's going on in her life, I acknowledge that she is just having a busy, crazy day. We all have those, right? And it's just not a good time to talk. So she is more open to talk at another time. So I just have to be respectful of that, right? Okay, so now we're going to go. We're going to go to one that is more ready, that is more open, and now is just a good time, right? Uh, are we giving out flyers for the Christian Fellowship? So what is the flyers again? Okay, so we're talking about friends and family tonight. All right, so... Um, we're talking about friends and family. So this is how we're going to go if we have open doors today, right? Hi, my name is Tara, and we are from that church down the street there, and we are just out in the neighborhood. We want to get to know our friends and family in our neighborhood, and we have a friends and family day tomorrow, and we just want to invite all of our friends and family in this community today. Okay. is awesome we are looking to meet our neighbors and friends and family this must be a really good time for you welcome to the neighborhood hey. how are you liking it so far Okay, you know, yeah, the hurricane can be really scary, even for us Floridians who have been here for a while, you know. But but, but we just thank God that we we came out of it, right? We I came out of it. it. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so do you have any kids? Five of them. Oh, five kids. Yeah. Oh, wow, you have yeah, five kids. That must really keep you busy. I'm very busy. So, how old are your kids? Wow, you sure look good, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you, you know, I, that, that's awesome. I have two of my own, and, you know, it can be a little challenging at times, you know. But, but thank God for his grace that, you know, that, that he gives us, you know, that, that we are able to, to get the strength to be able to pour into our kids. And you're looking good, by the way, for having five kids. I mean, you don't even look wore out. You look just awesome. You see how I'm complimenting her? You see how I found something to connect? Yeah. Yeah. So you want to be friendly. You want to put that smile on. You want to connect. You want to find the common ground. You see the common ground was... was has kids, I have kids, I asked her what the kids do and everything, so I had a really good conversation, it was just a good time to talk with her, so now I'm going to, uh, now I'm going to pop the question, right, now I'm going to pop the question, well, it's great talking to you, Brenda, I know you probably got a lot going on today, but you know what, before we leave, is it okay for me to ask you a question? Yeah, sure. Do you know if you were to die today and stand before God and he were to say to you, Brenda, why should I let you into my heaven, what would you say? a good person do you see she pointed it to herself so she thinks because she has done these good works that that's why God should let her into her heaven so uh, I'm gonna respond now Brenda you know when I was young I used to think the same way I came out of religion. I thought because I was a good person, because I went to church, because I give to the poor, that I was going to, you know, stand before God and say, God, I've done all these good works, and because of that, you should let me in. But you know what I realized? I realized that every one of us have sinned. The Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. See, we deserve death. Nothing but death. But God loves us so much 
And he sent Jesus. See, Jesus had no sin, but yet he came and he went to the cross and he died for the sins of the world. Not one color, not one race. He died for the sins of the world, right? He dies for the sins of the world. And you know what? The Bible says that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, that we shall be saved. Brenda, would you like to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior today? Brenda is ready. You see, the sea, she is ready. When she is ready, I didn't have to make it happen. It just flows right into. It flows, right? So now I'm going to pray with Brenda. So Brenda, we're going to say a prayer. And this is not just a prayer. God is looking at the condition of your heart. You know, the Bible says, come just as you are. So you don't have to, you don't have to clean yourself up. You don't come just as the, w the way you are. And as we pray today, Jesus is going to come into your heart. Are you ready to pray and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Okay, pray with me. And you're going to pray as the Lord leads you. Yeah. This is not a, a, a prayer that you, just pray as the Lord leads you. Um, if you could um, say, thank you, Jesus, for uh, dying on the cross for our sin for being buried in a tomb and for rose, rising again, kind of um, reinforcing the gospel, Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. You want to make sure that they get that, you right? Okay, Brenda, I'm going to pray with you. And God is looking at the condition of your heart today, not so much the words that you're going to say. So as you're going to pray, believe that Jesus is going to come into your heart, right? Are you ready? Yes. Okay, so let's pray. Lord Jesus. I thank you that you came for me. I know I have sinned, but you went to the cross and you died for my sin. But three days later, you rose from the dead. Thank you for forgiving me of all of my sin and come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now, I heard Brenda's story that she has five kids, and she is busy, and sometimes she gets worn out, right? So I'm going to say, Brenda, is it okay for me to pray with you? And see, because I was a good listener before, now I know what to pray for Brenda, right? So now I'm going to say, can I touch your shoulder maybe? And I'm going to pray for her. Lord Jesus, I pray you touch Brenda by the power of your spirit. Help her to walk with you and get to know you, Lord. Touch her in a mighty way, Lord. Strengthen her, God. Give her strength to, and wisdom to raise these kids that you have given her, Lord. I thank you for Brenda, and I pray your blessings in the name of Jesus. Amen. You don't have to go in any big, long prayer, simple prayer. Keep it simple. Keep it simple, right? Now, I'm going to say, Brenda, is it okay for me to have your name and phone number? So I'm going to take that name and phone number. What is a good way to connect with you? Maybe text, Usually Facebook? Text. text is good. Yeah. All right. Is it okay for me to text you and see how you're doing? Yeah. And you know what? We have service tomorrow at 10 a.m. Um, would it be okay for me to text you and remind you to, to come on over? I or Okay, so I'm going to remind her if she needs a ride, maybe somebody can give her a ride or something like that. But follow-up is the key. So we have to follow up and make sure that she is being following up and, and she is learning to read her Bible. Brenda, do you have a Bible, by the way? No, you don't have a Bible. Okay, so if you come, I'll get you a Bible. Maybe we could get her a Bible. And a great place to start reading your Bible is the book of John where you can learn more about Jesus. Awesome. All right, Brenda, and I want to encourage you also to pray, Brenda. It's important to talk to the Lord, and that's how we get to know him. We talk to the Lord, and we can talk to him about anything that's going on in our families and everything like that, right? All right, so I'll connect with you tomorrow. Thank you for your time. Did you see how easy that was to lead somebody to Jesus?
And you see, I didn't use any big fancy words. So don't worry about people that are using big fancy words. Just be you, be real, be yourself. And as you go out into the community, you're going to see the Spirit of the Lord moving in a mighty way. You're going to see hearts and lives touch. You're going to see people transform and change by the power of the Holy Spirit. If they're experiencing sickness or difficulties in their lives, ask them if you can pray about that. And when you pray, expect the Lord to move. Expect the Lord to bring healing. Expect him to to set people free. Expect him to have a word from him. And if if he does give you a word, and you know it's from the Lord, don't say, thus says the Lord. Because remember, sometimes you're just learning, right? Sometimes you're just learning, and you're not so sure if that's the voice of the Lord or if it's just the pizza you eat last night, right? So what you could say, you know, I feel feel like maybe something is going on with your back today, you know. I feel like the Lord is showing. Is is, is there anything going on? You're asking them if anything is going on. And if they say no, maybe maybe it's something else you're feeling. Or maybe you're feeling for somebody else. I, I don't know what it is. But that may be a time that, that the Lord is showing you. I'm just teaching you how to operate a little bit in the gift things, you know. Uh, when I start moving in the gift things, I was like, Lord, what's going on here? I literally feel somebody is having a heart attack, and I was feeling the heart attack. I'm like, what's going on with me? But the Lord was showing me at that point that something was going on with somebody, and I was able to pray. Sometimes you hear the voice. Sometimes you feel. I feel usually. Um, so, so believe to walk in the supernatural. As we go out, believe as we pray, as we lay hands on the sick, that we will see them recover. Most of all, believe for salvation, that people's eyes will be opened. That's, that's the greatest miracle of all. Salvation is the greatest miracle of all. So we're believing that as we go out in the community today, that we're going to see some salvation, that we're going to see some healings, that we are going to invite our community to, uh, to our event tomorrow, and their lives are going to be touched. Amen? Any questions at this time? Yeah, yeah, we'll talk about that. But any other questions as far as? Good question. I would say don't go in. Because you don't know, you don't know this family yet. Um, oh, okay. What she was saying that if you go and you knock at a door and they invite you in, if you should go in. I would say don't go in. You don't know the family. You don't know if drugs is going on in the house. You don't know. You need to be aware of your surroundings. Um, and I would say not go in. Um, until you maybe have developed a relationship, or maybe if you see it's just a senior citizen person and, 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 and you know, you feel in your spirit, you'll know. You'll feel in this, your spirit. You have the Holy Spirit inside of you, and the Holy Spirit will warn you. But I would caution you about going in people's house. Um, I think we should just stay outside, maybe until you get to know that family and you know it's safe to go in because you don't know what's going on. Um, I would encourage as you go out also, male with male, female with female, unless you are married. Male with male, female with female, unless you're married. Or if you're going in teams of three, then you could have two male and a female or something like that. All right. Any more questions? Yes, tracks are good. Tracks are good. Sometimes you're able to go out and give out tracks. Like if you're you're standing out on the side of the road or in front of a uh, flea market or something like that, you you may not be able to preach the gospel. And, but as people are passing by, you're giving them a track. But it's all, all if they're open, it's great to explain the gospel to them. That's okay. Don't be sorry.
you do is something not of God. Well, what do you do? You, the Lord is going with you. You're not walking in fear, so don't run. <laughs> I'm taking that thing on because greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. You are going fear. Remember, you're going filled up and you're going prayed up. And be, um, I'm glad you said that because I'll share quickly a little story of what happened to me. When I went first on the mission field, I, remember I said when I got saved, I, I wasn't disciple. I, I didn't have anybody to disciple me. And, and my testimony is another story. Um, I was persecuted and I lived in South America. So I, I, I literally read probably from Genesis. Maybe I go to Leviticus and go, what's this? But I didn't know. Nobody taught me, you know. But um, I didn't know what I was doing. So what, the Lord had called us to go back to Guyana. And we went on a mission trip. I was me, my husband. And a friend of mine, but we were separated. We were staying at different homes. And my daughter was only one. So we went, to, um, we went there and we got a message that this little girl was really sick. And she was really sick. Her sister had died. I share a little tiny bit from that and last night. But her sister had died from all the sy very symptoms that she was experiencing. Now, we got to that home. That home was filled with Hindus and Muslims. Remember, I said, I didn't know what I was doing. But I have the one who knows all things and what he is doing. He's doing the work. I am not going, doing the work. I'm just following him. So as we got into that home, we, 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 I had read in the Bible where it says, lay hands on the sick and you will see them recover. Luke 10, 19, behold, I have given you uh, power to trample on serpent and scorpion and all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm you. And as we went in, we, we start praying for that little girl who was there. She was probably about nine years old. You could literally see the bones in her body. She was, hadn't eaten for days. And she was there lying like almost uh, ready to go home. And, um, and her sister had died uh, just about a month or so before that of the same symptoms. We walk into that house and mom start manifesting. Remember, I didn't know what to do. I never dealt with a situation like that. But we have the Holy Spirit inside of us. The same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwells inside of us. So we're not going to walk in fear. And as we walk in there, and as she starts coming to attack me, she was like double my size. And I'm telling you, the power of the Holy Spirit hit me at that very moment. And I walk up to her. I didn't know what I was doing, right? I didn't know what I was doing. I threw her on the ground, <laughs> and I sat on her. I sat on her, and I said, in the name of Jesus, come out of her. I didn't know what I was doing. Guess what? She was set free at that very moment. She was set free at that very moment, and at that very moment, the Lord said he was healing that little girl. And I prophesied and I said, be healed, little girl, in the name of Jesus. And then I said to her, baby, are you hungry? And she says, yes. I said, bring me some food. They brought me a bowl of soup and I fed her. She ate it all and I said, are you full? She says, no, I'm still hungry. I gave her another bowl of soup and some bread. She ate it all. And then she got up and she says, mama, can I go play with my friends? That's the power of the living God that we serve. And so as we go out, we are not going to walk in fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Don't let the enemy put fear, doubt, and unbelief in your heart and in your mind that you cannot do this. Remember, we are not going on our own. We are going, we are covered by the blood of Jesus. And we are going to see people's life change and transform by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. So that's how you would respond. You wouldn't sit down them, though. You wouldn't throw them on the ground and sit on them. <laughs> I didn't know, but, but I knew enough. The Holy Spirit, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, the Lord did it. <laughs> All right, any more questions? Yeah. Yes. 
we have done we have done different things on the street corners. We have given out bottle waters. Um, usually, sometimes we would meet in an area. We would do things like block parties where we would have things in the community, um, like games and stuff for the kids. We would make provide like hot dogs or little things like that, and then we will preach the gospel. Yes, we have done things like that. Yes. It's awesome. Anything that you could do to attract people and bring them to Jesus is awesome to do. All right. Any more questions? Okay. Come out strong and, you know, yeah. <clears throat> Um, if they are open, if they are open, yes, you can you can send them if they need counseling, get information that send them to counseling and things like that. You can do prayer or, or you can do prayer as well. You want to do prayer first of all because you're there with them. But if they are, if you feel like they're suicidal or something like that, you want to point them into the right direction, maybe where they can get some physical help as well. Oh, language barriers. Um, sometimes it's hard to do. So it's nice to have. Sometimes it's hard to do because what can you say? You may just say, Dios te bendiga. If you have somebody, then go with them. But don't let that stop you. What you could possibly do in that situation is maybe get Spanish tracks as well. So if you're not able to talk to that person, you could just leave a track with them maybe, you know. Um, or if they're open to talk and they want you to come back, maybe you can bring a Spanish-speaking person with you the next time. I would say keep it as keep it simple. Keep it simple. You don't want to carry a whole lot of stuff with you. You don't want to carry a really big Bible like you're fetching a Bible like you're gonna hit them in the head. If you carry a Bible, maybe a little one in a little purse with your with you know uh, 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 maybe a little notepad to take name and address and phone number or so. So you can probably visit and follow up with people. So if you were going door to door and you were knocking at somebody's door and they weren't available to talk to you at that time and they want you to come back the next time, you may want to take a name, phone number, find out when is a better time to to visit and um, and you know to be able to stay connected with them. And if ask them if they're open for you to visit back again for the ones that are um, that are open. Yeah. Some people don't want to drive by. No, you don't want to drive by. What you want to do is park somewhere that's close by, and then everybody just walk, walk along. What we usually do when, if we're going to start, like today we're going to go, we're going to go house to house. But usually when we go, if say, say for example, we decide that we're going to take this one community, and we're going to be, we want to preach the gospel in this, this area, say, say a little block area, right? Like three or four streets maybe. We will, what we will do is we will walk the streets beforehand, or we will drive through the streets and pray in the spirit maybe as we're driving through the street and ask the Lord what is the stronghold in that area and pray against that stronghold in that area and, um, and ask the Lord what would be the easiest, what would be the best way to reach this community. And then not only that, then you just start going. And, you know, sometimes when you go, when you go into a new community, it's not always going to be easy. But we need to be faithful and not give up. We need to be faithful and not give up, like I shared with the Jehovah Witnesses. So as we go into the communities, we're going to go and we're going to knock on the door. 
the first time they may open the door or they may not open the door. I don't know if your area here is saturated with Jehovah Witnesses because they're all over the place. And sometimes when you go the first time or so, sometimes people think you're Jehovah Witnesses. And sometimes they may not open the door, uh, you know, for you. But if you keep going and you keep being kind and loving, filled with the love of Jesus, and as you're going back and going back and going back again, I believe the Lord is going to touch and you're going to see breakthroughs in this community. So don't give up. Well, um, if you encounter a situation and you see you are not getting anywhere, just thank them for their time and move on. Don't waste your time there. Don't waste your time there. There are other people that the Lord has already prepared their hearts. So they're not ready. They're forming an argument or whatever it is. Just say, thank you for your time, ma'am. Um, but um, I just have some other homes to, to visit. And, you know, so just be still respectful. Be respectful. Never get into the argument because you may totally win the argument, but you will lose that person. So never get into the argument. If you notice it's heading that direction, just move on. There's other people who the Lord has already prepared their heart. They're not just ready. But by you being kind, by you putting a smile on their face and even in their argument, just say thank you so much for your time. It's great to talk to you today. And just move on. Just thank them for the time and move on. Don't stay and argue. Never get into an argument. And if another thing, if you encounter a situation, if somebody asks you a question, they were open and they ask you a question, but you have no idea what the answer is, here's what you're going to do. You're going to say, that's a great question, but you know what? I haven't thought about that. If that is so important to you, I can find out the answer for you and get back to you. Would you give me your phone number? This way, you're not focusing on what you don't know. The main thing you, you'll say, I don't know about that, but this is what I know. Jesus saved me. He set me free, and he gave me hope. You, sh you can share your testimony at that point. You can share your testimony. It depends on the time that you have. If you, another thing about your testimony, if you're going to share your testimony, keep it simple, quick, and easy. Because remember, we have to be mindful of people's time. We don't want to take the whole day. So keep it simple. Focus less about yourself and focus more on Jesus. Good? Yes, you can. You can do that. Yes. Somebody else? Okay. Well, you use discernment. You use discernment. If you see it, so don't give people of the opposite sex, maybe. Um, if, if you notice that it, it's genuine and it's a young lady that you can relate to and maybe she, you know, you use discernment. If you feel in your spirit, you can then do it. If you don't, then take their information and say, I'll connect. I'll, um, I'll connect with you. And maybe when you call, you can block your number. The flyer would have the church address. You have a phone number on there as well? Yes, okay, the know. church. Give them the church one then. Yeah, give them the church one. Yeah, there you go. Any more questions? Are we good? Okay. If you knock at a door and someone come with a gun in your face, what are you going to do? I mean, you're going to leave. I mean, you're not going to stay there. You're going to run. <laughs> we, have, we have, by the way, don't allow fear to overcome you. We, we, have never, we have never encountered that. We are going by faith. We are covered by the blood of Jesus, and we're going to go in that. Yeah?
Yeah, most people, genu generally you find most people are nice. Very few people might be weird. So don't, don't let that discourage you from going out. We have gone into drug neighborhoods, walk into different areas and see God totally transform and change lives. Yes, yeah, so we're not going to walk by fear. Well, you get you get away. You trust the Lord. You you you're gonna trust the Lord. We're not gonna allow fear to rule us. We're not gonna allow fear to rule us. We're just gonna trust the Lord. And I, remember, He is going with us. He is going with us. He's covering under His blood, and He's going with us. The worst thing is gonna happen. You know what? I'm gonna go to be with Jesus if something should happen. That's the worst that could happen. I'm going to go be with Jesus. That's the worst would happen. And it's not the worst. It's awesome. But I would love to be here and more. But if it's my timing, I'm going to go be, be with Jesus regardless, you know. All right. Awesome. We're getting ready to go. Somebody is, is being a possessed. You're rebuking. The, you're, 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 you're praying that they'll be set free in Jesus' name. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Good. We answer all the questions. Good. You are awesome. You're empowered. You're filled up. You're prayed up. And we're going to go out and see.